Hello everybody, it's Dare here and welcome to another new kind of video that you're going to be seeing a lot more of on the channel going forward. And whether you're a new or an old viewer, just sit back, relax, let me explain to you why you should be playing indie games. There's something for everyone. Indie games doesn't have a lot of investors who just needs to make a quick buck, so there's no need to sell like millions of copies. Of course, it's preferred if it happens, but the indie game developers just really hope to sell enough copies to just keep making games, really. That means that indie games doesn't need to cater to a broad audience or as broad of an audience as possible in order to make to sell these millions of copies. Indie games instead just can be highly specialized and you know catered to what the developers consider their core audience. So you really need to start asking yourself questions like do I want to build automated factories? Well, Factorio's got your back. Or maybe you want to solve mysteries as an insurance investigator. I know that sounds rather dull, but Return of the Oberdeen really makes a super compelling and gripping game for that detective itch of yours. Or maybe you just really want to try the life of a mischievous goose. Untitled Goose Game hunks straight into your heart. A short way to the top. Triple A productions really have super big teams and it can be really hard as a player to feel like you can actually get in touch with any of the developers. But because indie games are so highly specialized, the developers often encourage communication and are really, really active on their social media because most indie developers go by the notion that if you want to make a really, really good game, your core audience can give you incredible feedback. And so indie games really more often than not offer some sort of demo or maybe an alpha or a beta version of the game or even early access where they really encourage people to try out the games and you know give feedback what worked what didn't work where can they improve and so on and so forth and then listen to the feedback in a future patch. And on top of this a lot of indie developers and publishers have discord servers where they can really get hands-on uh, communication with their community and they can share stuff like screenshots and feedback and news and all that kind of jazz that really makes the player feel some sort of ownership of the games as well. Indie games are cheap! You know, price points for indie games are typically around like 10, 20 or maybe 30 dollars or euros depending on where you live. That's at least half the price of a AAA production and for that you can get a lot. I know play times can vary depending on you know what fits the game uh, the developer feels like and also what genre a game really is but for the price of at least half of what is a AAA production you can get everything from really really focused stories and experience of you know below 10 hours to expansive worlds with over 50 hours of experience once you once you add everything up to it or you can maybe even find games that have a hundred plus hours because that's what fits the game and the developers have created this gameplay loop that can just be played over and over and over again maybe not focusing that much on a story but whether or not the prices of indie games are actually too low that's a topic I think I want to explore in another video. True passion. So this point really plays into the fact that indie games are highly specialized because indie game developers have the willpower and the passion to see through that they make the games they want to make and not whatever an investor needs to make. Indie game developers are often smaller teams like Team Cherry who created the whole Hollow Knight franchise at this point uh, with just three people or maybe a solo developer who just single-handedly is creating the vision that they have in their minds of this beautiful game that they really 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 want to make. And this also leads to some really really weird and crazy ideas like you know in Hades where you play this angsty teenage god in a Greek pantheon that just struggles with everyday problems or you know being a dwarf in space mining for every last drop of resources of a planet, you know, like dwarves do, but in space. A great example of the passion and willpower to see it through is Studio MDHR, the developer behind Cuphead, who took out second mortgages of their houses just to make sure that they created 
the game that they wanted to make and that they thought was best for their players. That's true passion. And the single best reason for you to play indie games is unique experiences. Because AAA productions need to sell as many copies as humanly possible, they often, you know, fall back on concepts that are, well, they're mostly fun still, but they are just tried and tested rigorously because you know they work. Indie game developers, on the other hand, form their games from ideas in their own mind that sort of maybe just have the strangest feeling that it'll work in a game setting. And a lot of the times, indie games actually start out in some sort of game jam and you know they just take it from there. This leads to a lot of innovation and a lot of concept that you would never ever find in a AAA production. Example of this could be Magicka from the last decade where they had this concept of really fun chaos co-op gameplay where you could actually kill your teammates and that was really really unseen at the time. And another example could be the meta aspect of one shot where the game actually placed files on your computer and not just in the game itself or in the game folders. No, you actually had to scroll through your documents or maybe it changed your wallpaper or something like that. Or a third example could be the hyper focus on NPCs and the world around the player and the breaking down of classical RPG elements and Undertale. You know, the kind of concept that really made the player think, why am I even doing this actually? And not just, I'm doing this because I have to. It's what the RPG formula says I should be doing. And that, my dear viewer, is my five reasons why you should be playing indie games. Did I miss any really, really good reason? Or what do you think of my reasons? I would love to hear your thoughts down in the comments below. And well, I'll see you in the next one. Over and out.